leading. It is Van der Velden who is second. It's Percival who is third. And Billy Seabold is down in about sixth position. And this is where, on a flying lap, these Formula One folks are doing some 125 miles an hour. C. Molinari with the sponsors riding up out of the water. This is the man in powerboat racing. Formula Two world champion in 1973, 1976, 1980. Formula One world champion in 1980 and 1981. And he comes up to the SS Great Britain turn and see the lead that he has with his boat weaving under the power as he goes with clear water to complete lap one. And in second place, it is Van der Velden, the Dutchman. In third place, it is Tom Percival. Fourth, it is Roger Jenkins. Fifth, it is Billy Seabold in the 2002 CC engine, Mercury engine boat. And at the end of the first lap, Molinari leads by 4.6 seconds. Front of the boat drops into the water to take the Cumberland Basin turn, which is like slamming on four disc brakes on a Formula One car. There's Van der Velden behind him. There's Tom Percival on the left in his rebuilt boat. Chris Hodges has been working 20, nearly 24 hours without sleep to get that boat rebuilt. The engine was lost. Tom Percival engine dropped to the bottom of Stuartby. And we got news just before we came on the air that his engine had been found and passed it to Tom Percival, who will now doubt be very relieved because it's an enormously expensive works engine and see how he's using it. Tom Percival is past Van der Velden. He's up into second place. Percival second, Van der Velden third. In fourth position, this is the battle for second. There's Percival round in the Princess Street. And coming up fast is Billy Seabold. Billy Seabold is going to take in the two-litre engine boat, the 2002 engine. This is a terrific performance. Seabold has got up from fifth to fourth, and soon he's going to be up into third position by taking Van der Velden. And Seabold is past. Look at that, that's a two-litre engine boat passing a three-and-a-half-litre engine boat, and it demonstrates the power is not everything in powerboat racing any more than it is in car or motorcycle racing, because if you can get the balance of power and handling right, you can win on a twisty course like this. So now, Seabold has got ahead of him, Tom Percival in second place, Renato Molinari, the leader, there he is, out of the couple of beasts in turn, down to the SS Great Britain. And now, I do believe that Bill Seabold is catching Tom Percival. The gap between Percival and Seabold is 4.4 seconds. There is Percival, here is Seabold. And behind them, Van der Velden. Bill Seabold has already won. That's Tom Percival in the rebuilt boat. You see his name, Tom Percival, painted on the side. The whole of the boat from the word Tom has been completely replaced since yesterday. And that's no easy job with these heavy ply boats. New engine, of course. There's per there is Seabold. And the next boat up would be Van der Velden as Tom Percival in second position. Behind Renato Molinari, the world champion. And uh, touring past us, out of the race, is Roger Jenkins. Roger Jenkins is touring into the pits. There he is. That's the man who's leading the world championship. And he's in real trouble. He's coming... Billy He's waving as he goes oh, into the pits. And there is Seabold. There is Seabold. And ahead of him, Tom Percival. Just imagine doing 120 miles an hour in a boat and driving into that solid wall of spray in front of you. And somehow you have to pluck up your courage, come out one side or the other, and hope to get past. But you've got to be a lot closer than Bill Seabold is to Tom Percival at the present moment. That is Molinari. Molinari is out. The world champion, the race leader in this dramatic race is out of it. And we are on lap 12 and now it's all between
between Percival and Seabold, who are approaching the Hotwell Road turn on their way to Cumberland and Basin, and this is the battle for the lead. And they're coming up to two men to lap them. Alan Nimmo is now going to be lapped by Tom Percival. Number five, Alan Nimmo in the Velvet Johnson, three and a half litre V8 engine boat, the Scotsman. And Tom Percival's got the scramble past him quickly, and Percival is closing up to his teammate, Bob Sporting. And now Seabold is right with the race leader. Tom Percival, is he going to take him? If Seabold wins this race, it will be an absolute upturn of form. It will be sensational. Because we, and he's, he's ahead. There is, he's ahead of Bob Spaulding. The Percival and Spaulding folks are identical. They both wear orange helmets, but Percival still holds his lead over that man, number 190, Billy Siebel. They are on lap 13, the world champion who led from flag fall until the end of lap 10. Renato Molinari is out. Roger Jenkins, who is leading the World Championship of 1982, is out. So that blows their chances for maximum points. Tom Percival is in fourth position in the championship. Billy Seabold is not actually competing in the championship this year, except perhaps for the American race. But now, as things temporarily die down in excitement terms on lap 13, we see Percival and Seabold coming up to the SS Great Britain on their way to complete lap 13 to start the 14th and last lap but one. Percival on the right, Seabold first and second. Percival three and a half litre engine. Seabold two litres plus, just plus. In third position now, Arthur Moster, the Dutchman in the Velden Johnson. In fourth position, Bob Spaulding, Tom Percival's teammate. In fifth position, Alan Nimmo. In sixth position, Carla Colombo. Lap 14, 15 lap race, first and second. It is unlikely that Seabold will have had a signal as is regularly done in Formula One car racing, but I don't think he needs a signal, he knows, and Percival's got an advantage here. He's left that tail end. Bill Seabold now does so. towards us on the right the distinctive black and gold John Player special photo number 10 Tom Percival leads Bill Seabold is right down the tunnel we can see air completely 1.82 seconds behind him closer than that at the turn Seabold uses the nimbleness of his boat to close up Percival uses the power of his larger engine to pull away or does he Seabold is getting past this is it this is the last lap is Bill Seabold going to win Mike this is magnificent stuff Tom Percival comes up to the couple of base of turn he shows the rough water to Bill Seabold who got right level with him and they're now into the last major turn and it looks as though Tom Percival has got enough clear water between him and Bill Seabold to guarantee success Tremendously close stuff. Now the right-hander down to the to the SS Great Britain. Then they burst into what you could call the finishing straight, except that it has uh, a bit of a curve on it. And the checkered flag is out. Percival takes it. But a brilliant second place for Bill Siebold, who was only two seconds behind Renato Molinari in the first heat, and he was ahead of Tom Percival, who was third in the first heat. So it all depends now on the accumulated times. 
Tom Percival wins heat two of the OZ World Championship Formula One race here at Bristol Docks from only... ...of the Embassy Powerboat Grand Prix, which is taking place in Bristol, in the docks there. And the race we're going to see, first of all, is a Formula Two event for two-litre catamarans for the Duke of York Trophy. Now, the race had hardly got into its stride before it had to be stopped. The commentator is Murray Walker. <laughs> Seabold has completed three laps out of 20 in this Duke of York trophy event. And look at that! A terrible crash, and that's number, that's Nick, that's Nick Cripps, and he looks perfectly all right. Well, the rescue boats will be out now. And the boat is going down badly. He's just clipped the turn there. And that's John Hill coming up to look and see if he's all right. John Hill is diving in to save Nick Cripps. Well, John Hill has thrown away all chances of winning, and he might well have done. This is a very gallant and courageous act, and it's typical of the sort of sportsmanship you see, and it looks as though the race is being stopped. The race is being stopped with that development, with Nick Cripps having crashed his boat. John Hill immediately pulls out of the race, goes to save Cripps, not knowing that he was perfectly all right, which, as I was saying, is typical of the sportsmanship that you get in powerboat racing, and it is something that Mark Wilson did at Hanover, because Pierre Luigi Bonvicini, the Italian driver, crashed in a similar way to Cripps at Hanover, and without a moment's hesitation, Mark Wilson, the then world championship leader, pulled out of his, the race, dived out of his boat, and saved Bonvicini. And you can see how shallow the water is because that's Cripps wading to the rescue boat after a truly dramatic incident. Well, happily, it looked a lot nastier than it was and the driver was OK. But, of course, the 16 boats were then reassembled and the race restarted. Now, these, of course, are the fastest 16 twin-hulled catamarans coming through from the earlier rounds of this competition for the Duke of York Trophy. And this is how the race was restarted. With the news that Nick Cripps is perfectly okay, and what good news that is, because tragically we had a fatality here at Bristol.